right, uh, I guess we can get started. So I want to welcome everyone to Zhen Dong Zheng's uh, thesis defense. Uh, so Zhen Dong got his bachelor's degree from Tsinghua in 2011 and his master's degree here at MIT um, in 2014. Um, during that year, he actually TA'd for me in my image processing class. Um, I had given him some you know, very rough outline suggestions in terms of, oh, maybe it'd be good to have some MATLAB ex uh, experiments in this class, maybe we can do something like this. And then he created a whole series of eight labs from scratch for the course. It's very impressive. And so when he was looking for a group to join for PhD, I was very happy to have him join my group. Um, so his PhD research has really focused on how do you develop uh, very efficient algorithms that are hardware friendly that can be used for visual data processing under very tight energy constraints or, or under super constraints. Um, he's worked on a wide range of applications. So in today's talk, he's going to be talking about some applications in the robotics space, but he's also worked on applications like image processing, um, or image compression in particular, and super resolution. Um, actually, and you'll also see some of those themes actually permeate into uh, this uh, presentation as well today. Um, and then he was able to realize a lot of those designs and collaborations with other students in our group to build actual uh, hardware and then integrate them into systems. Uh, so with that, uh, I invite Jadon to take it away. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to my thesis defense. Today, I will talk about efficient computing for autonomous navigation using algorithm and hardware co-design. Uh, this thesis is completed uh, under the advising of uh, Professor Vivian Z. And uh, Sotesh Karaman, Luca Kalo, and Philip Isola uh, are the other committee members. Um, autonomous navigation has seen a lot of applications. Um, drones use this technique to, to search and risk, uh, rescue in the aftermath of a natural disaster. Uh, Self-driving cars use techniques to drive around. Uh, there are a few t key techniques behind autonomous navigation. First is visual perception to process the images and videos to extract the syntax, syntax, semantic information about the objects. Localization for the uh, robots or vehicles to know where it, it is in a big map. And mapping, where the map is unknown, builds the map from scratch. Uh, the state of the art uh, algorithms for this task are very computationally demanding, requires powerful CPUs and piles of GPUs to complete the computation. The goal of this thesis to run those algorithms for autonomous navigation locally on miniature drones with only small embedded platforms available. And such platforms have very limited computational memory and power budget. We want to achieve low delay, high speed, as well as energy efficiency so that when running those algorithms, the battery of the device is not drained very fast. This um, thesis uh, consists of three parts. The first part is an object detection chip that can perform object detection uh, using a DPM algorithm uh, on full HD videos at 30 frames per second. This work is collaboration with uh, my colleague uh, Amr Suleiman. Uh, the second uh, contribution is a visual inertial odometry chip that enables miniature robots to do localization and mapping, and this is also done in collaboration with AMR. The final work uh, is the information theoretic mapping algorithm and systems on FPGA that enables uh, vehicles to do autonomous exploration of the environment. This work is done in collaboration with Trevor Henderson and Peter Lee. Um, AMR has already uh, highlighted the first two works in his thesis defense, so I'll focus on the more recent third one, information theoretic mapping algorithms and systems. Um, sometimes we need to do navigation and mapping in an unknown environment. And vehicles do this with sensors. For, for example, Google, uh, the car in Google to build the map has a very powerful LIDAR. And we can also um, equip depth sensors on the drones. Uh, and the map is built via multiple scans of depth depth sensor at different environments. There are some time uh, we have to uh, map the environment fast, such as after the uh, uh, natural disaster happened, and we need to map the environment to make quicker decisions to save more life. 
And uh, a key important decision factor is to decide the scan location because scanning at different locations gives us different amount of information about the environment. And of course, different uh, scan location sequences can impact the timing of the mapping time a lot because you have to travel around to make scans. Information theoretic mapping is a probabilistic framework to model the mapping problem as the fastest reduction of the entropy of the map or the uncertainty of the map. Um, it converts an, a 2D representation such as occupancy grid map of the environment into to a mutual information map, which basically tells us at what location, if we make scans there, how much information can we get from the depth measurement to the map. Since uh, the perspective updated map entropy, the conditional entropy of M given Z, is equal to the current map entropy minus the mutual information, by maximizing the mutual information, we're effectively minimizing the perspective entropy or uncertainty of the map after the scan. A typical information theoretic mapping framework can be divided into the following steps. First, we generate a candidate scan location set. For each point in the set, we evaluate the mutual information that we can get if we make a scan there. Then, among all those candidate locations, we find the best one that best balance the mutual information gain and the cost of traveling to there which uh, can be, say, the distance of traveling from the current location to the scan location. Then we control the, me the vehicle to move to that location, ask the vehicle to make a scan, and update the occupancy map. This requires evaluation of mutual information at multiple locations, and this is the computational bottleneck of the entire pipeline. A lot of research has been done before to prove the uh, like the number of scan locations that we need to evaluate. This work will show approach that uh, by like, be able to evaluate it much faster, we actually do not need to uh, make the pruning and just uh, densely compute it. Well, in order to run this algorithm on the embedded uh, platforms, there are two ch challenges. The first challenge is the high complexity of the algorithm. Because the map is represented in a discrete fashion, suppose the number of cells per meter per unit distance on the map uh, called map resolution is lambda m, then the mutual information computation involves an integration that cannot be analytically solved. As a result, we have to apply expensive numerical integration at resolution lambda z. The com time complexity to compute this mutual information for a single scan is all lambda m squared times lambda z. And the second is the amount of the input data. We use a discrete uh, uh, grid-based representation for 2D map, which consists of a lot of cells. And if we want to extend the framework to 3D, because of the added dimension, there are much more number of cells, and we need to consider so many candidate scan locations on this map. And uh, for each candidate scan location, we need to run the previously mentioned mutual information computation algorithm with complexity of O lambda squared times lambda z. So the solutions presented in this thesis has three uh, different uh, uh, contributions. The first is the better algorithm with simply lower complexity. The second is to compress the map and directly perform the computation on the compressed data structure. The third is to build specialized hardware for high throughput, energy efficient computation. And as we have, as I have said in the beginning and in the title, this is how algorithm and hardware design are both considered to tackle the pre previously mentioned challenge. Um, under each uh, contributions, there are a lot of technical contributions, but due to the time constraints, I'll only cover a subset of them. And this is the outline of the thesis defense. We will start with the preliminaries and notations. A 2D environment is typically represented by a 2D occupancy grid. 
Each grid uh, is called an occupancy cell associated with a binary random variable, mi, where zero stands that, uh, for the cell being empty, and one indicates the cell to be occupied. Each cell is also associated with an occupancy value, oi, which is the probability that mi equals to one, or the probability that the cell is occupied. Uh, when oi equals to one, the cell we know is occupied. When O1, OI is zero, we know the cell is empty. And when OI is 0.5, uh, there's no information that we know about the cell, it's unknown. And uh, there's another term associated with each cell, odds ratio, RI, which is the probability of cell being occupied over the probability of the cell being empty. The higher the RI, the more likely the cell to be occupied. Uh, so we are trying to reduce the map entropy, which consists of the entropy of the cells. Uh, and the entropy of the cell is minimal when OI is either zero or one. That is, when we know for sure whether a cell is occupied or empty, the en entropy of a cell is, uh, is minimized. And the goal is to reduce the entropy of the whole map, which is the summation of the entropy of the cell, all the cells. Here we make an assumption about the interdependence uh, among the cells in the map. Um, a vehicle travels around the environment and makes scans to update the occupancy map. The update is enabled by the Bayesian filter. A scan at a certain location consists of a lot of beams. For a certain beam, it intersects with uh, a lot of cells and if uh, that beam reads depth value z, uh, we can use this z to update the occupancy value or the odds ratio of all the cells on this beam. Specifically, for all the cells be before z, uh, z indicates the cell being empty, so uh, the Bayesian filter will uh, reduce the odds ratio. And uh, for the black cell that the range measurement indicates the cell to be occupied, the Bayesian filter increase the uh, odds ratio by delta O. And for the cells behind Z, because uh, the depth measurement is occluded by a cell before them, we know nothing about them. So um, delta I, Z, the inversely model is one, which means that the um, odds ratio is not uh, modified. Um, I've mentioned before that a sensor scan at a location consists of multiple beams indexed by B. Uh, we'll assume the standard assumption that beams are independent so that when we compute the mutual information between, the, uh, between all the beams and the map, uh, we can just compute the mutual information on a single beam and just sum them up. Uh, and when we study the evaluation of mutual information on a 1D beam, let i be the index of the cell in the beam, we make the second assumption about the independence among cells of the same beam, which is also standard assumption, so that we can only focus on the study of evaluation of mutual information for a single cell. Uh, this previous work summarized the mutual information for a single cell. Uh, the input uh, to the system is the occupancy value on a beam, O, I, or O, J and also the noise model of P of Z given EJ, where EJ means that uh, the J cell is the first cell being occupied. And uh, it also involves a term F delta R, which is the mutual information contribution of de depth measurement being Z to the I cell. And the last line shows the formulation for the mutual information. And uh, the takeaway take away message that there's no closed form solution to the, integra to the integral that appeared in the computation. Therefore, uh, researchers uh, sought uh, for numerical solutions. But basically, the integration is relaxed into summations at certain resolution. And this is the evaluation for single cells. Then researchers uh, and people need to summarize uh, across the cells. Let n be the number of cells on the beam, which is proportional to the map resolution and because beam length is considered a constant through exploration. The, and therefore, this numerical solution has a time complexity of O n squared times lambda z, or lambda squared uh, times lambda z. Okay, now we've 
uh, talk about uh, FSMI, the fast computation of channel mean information, the algorithm that we propose to reduce the complexity. Uh, the original channel mutual information algorithm um, do this uh, mutual information evaluation for each cell individually and then sum them up. Uh, instead, the proposed uh, algorithm, FSMI, evaluates the mutual information for all the cells in an entire beam altogether. Uh, the observation is that uh, the evaluation of mutual information for each individual cell has components that got integrated together and the integration can only be done by numerical integration. But if we compute, consider them all together, perform a reshuffle so that uh, some structure shared between the computation of uh, each cell got put out and regrouped together, uh, they can give us closed form solution. Specifically, uh, we will derive this uh, algorithm in a few slides. Uh, we just write out the mutual information and as the sub mutual information among all the cells and put the result of the previous theorem in, into it. We note that this uh, perspective depth measurement probability has a form. We pu put it in and uh, we use uh, the intuition from the previous slide which is to reshuffle the computation. So we switch the order uh, between to uh, be between summations, and uh, we got a term highlighted in red, which is the mutual information contribution of a certain depth measurement Z to all the cells on a, a beam. And uh, this red uh, term uh, has a special property that we can leverage. Uh, as long as uh, Z falls onto a certain cell, regardless of its exact value, this real term is constant. Uh, therefore, this term um, is a piecewise constant uh, function. Uh, therefore, we break this integration over like Z uh, over the <coughs> continuous range of the entire beam uh, along the cell boundaries so that uh, each cell uh, 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 in each sub-integration, the blue term becomes constant and we pull out this constant. We note that uh, the leftover integration is the integration of uh, PDF along the cell boundary. And if we have access to the CDF function of the noise distribution, we can compute it in O1. So, under the Gaussian noise model, let uh, that uh, PDF integration be GKJ, we have a nice solution to the mutual information computation. And this is the most equation of the defense. It has three components. The first component, PEI, the probability for the I cell being occupied can be computed in ON. The second term, the mutual information term, the con constant term for other cells can also be computed in ON. The la last term, suppose we have access to the CDF function of a Gaussian distribution, can, can be computed in O1. Therefore, the whole mutual information computation can be done in, uh, exactly in O1 square. And furthermore, we can do another, uh, we can use another technique to accelerate the al algorithm. Uh, the technique is to approximate the noise model for depth sensor. Uh, we know, all know that Gaussian distribution decay very fast uh, beyond the mean. Therefore, we truncated it uh, for the points outside a, a radius of delta of the mean. We truncate it to zero. And delta can be as small as three or five of uh, times the cell width. Therefore, uh, the double uh, one for a loop of the double for a loop uh, becomes a uh, summation over a small neighborhood of two delta plus one instead of a summation over the entire beam. Because delta is such a small constant, we claim that IMZ can be computed approximately in ON. Um, compared uh, against alternative matrix Koch-Schwarz quadratic mutual information, uh, says QMI proposed by researchers to accelerate the original FS, uh, the original channel information. This uh, 
um, metric is a less well understood and less principled metric. Its computation has two similar uh, double for loop structure, while our algorithm only has one. By counting ops, our algorithm has uh, fewer than half uh, of ops compared with uh, this is QMI. And we evaluate the effectiveness of this uh, technique on 1D synthetic beam. Uh, we measure the average running time on a beam of length 128 on an Intel CPU, and we observe that the exact FSMI is three orders of magnitude faster than the original FSMI. And uh, the approximation introduced another 8x acceleration. Compared with a proxy QMI, it is around 1.7x faster. We also measure uh, the average running time of a prox FSMI a prox and a proxy QMI on an ARM CPU, and we see larger acceleration. So in conclusion, 1.7x acceleration on an Intel CPU, 2.8x acceleration on an ARM CPU. We also perform a 2D synthetic 2D experiment. Uh, uh, we asked the vehicle to explore this environment uh, and we report the trajectory length. And we see that uh, uh, a proxy FSMI achieves similar uh, trajectory length compared with Cisco MI. And both are significantly shorter than a simple method which is driving to the nearest frontier. So we achieve acceleration with no penalty on the trajectory lens. Uh, we also in implement this uh, algorithm in a uh, real information theoretic mapping system in a risk car. This is in collaboration with Trevor Henderson. And the top, uh, the, the left figure shows the picture of the car in the environment. Uh, the top uh, right figure shows the occupancy map uh, with the planned pass, and the bottom right figure shows the mutual information surface. Again, the brighter the color is, the higher in information that we can get if we make a scan at that position. And here is the video. We can see that, uh, yeah, the car is always moving towards the place with the highest mutual information. And uh, because of the mechanical constraints, it cannot always go forward. Sometimes it go forward, sometimes it go backward but it, always, it is always moving towards the high mutual information spots. Okay, the summary of contribution for this work is uh, FSMI algorithm, a new formula that avoids numerical integration and computes exact channel mutual information in O n square. A prox FSMI algorithm that approximates the sensor noise models uh, to compute the channel mutual information in ON with negligible accuracy loss. And the system is tested in real uh, environment to do a 2D mapping task in the motion capture room. Compared with the original channel mutual information work, it is uh, three orders of magnitude faster. And compared with alternative, alternative metric that is less well principled and less understood, um, it is around 1.7 to 2.8x faster. Now we talk about how to do FSMI on compressed occupancy map for 3D mapping. When we extend the mapping framework from 2D to 3D, the biggest challenge is the increased memory size because of the added dimension. Um, researchers use a data structure called OctoMap to tackle this. Uh, the OctoMap basically uh, represents a scene at different scale uh, for different level of details. Uh, it also uses a tree structure to adaptively uh, compress the scene. For a uh, homogeneous, uh, for big homogeneous empty areas, it, it will only use uh, uh, larger cells uh, for, to get better compression, but for places where objects show up that needs higher resolution, it will uh, use like finer resolution to do the presentation, or to, to do the compression. Uh, when we compute, uh, when we apply the information theoretic mapping framework 
uh, to the all octal map for each beam, we have to do a ray tracing to decide which cells on it. And because of this data structure, the 1D occupancy vector of the uh, ray tracing algorithm consists of multiple segments with repeated occupancy values. Uh, well, in order to perform SF FSMI on the compressed input, we can just uncompress it run the FSMI algorithm, which has a complexity of ON. Alternatively, we can compress the input with the run length encoding. So for each segment, we record the occupancy value that is repeated, as well as how many times that value is repeated. I suppose there are NR groups. The goal is to achieve the complexity of ONR. And in practice, NR is significantly smaller than N. So as long as the constant of the algorithms is reasonable, we should be able to get significant reduction on the running time. Uh, so the original FSMI algorithm uh, is a two loop, a two double for loop sum. So it's basically a computing between two cells on the same beam, indexed by JK. But because of this uh, compressed input format, we should uh, con uh, consider the computation between two groups of cells indexed by U and V instead of two individual cells. Uh, let the two groups be uh, indexed by U and V, uh, SU being the index, uh, the starting index of the use group, LU be the length of the use group, and OU be the occupancy value of the use group, similar for the Vs group. We can regroup the mutual information computation into those two groups. So it becomes a four double, uh, a, a four, um, four times recursive uh, sum. Um, within each uh, group pair, U and V, there is another sum. And uh, if we break up the sum in the parentheses, uh, the key thing is the uh, other terms in red. And here there is another a uh, variable t, which is the relative distance between the two blocks. If we combine those two, uh, th those red terms and uh, remove the peripheral black terms, we essentially are considering this summation. And if we can evaluate this summation in O1, then the exact FSMI can be evaluated in ONR square, and the prox FSMI can be evaluated in ONR. Uh, well, the first attempt is to try to find an analytical solution. But I couldn't find an analytical solution for this summation. So I relax it uh, into integration. Luckily, there is a closed form solution, which is this big thing. It has eight different uh, error function evaluations, 10 evaluation of non-trivial terms um, that includes a logarithm and exponent, and it takes another 60 multiplications to combine them. Although it has nice complexity of O1, we believe the solution is not practical be because of the constant overhead. This motivates uh, me to pursue tabulation-based solution. So uh, if, if we look at the summation, there are four terms to tabulate against, LU, LV, X, and T. Uh, so here X uh, is the uh, one minus OI, the complement of the occupancy value. So if we just brute forcefully tabulate it, uh, the size of the table is N cubed times uh, the size of X, where the, the size of X is the number of possible quantization levels of the occupancy value OI. And uh, uh, on a typical beam, say its length is 256, and the quantization level is 100, then the size of the table would be 6.25 gigabytes if we store uh, the uh, entries of the table as a 32-bit floating point. Uh, well, this uh, table size may be acceptable for some powerful computers. We believe for embedded devices, it, it is too big. So we try to reduce the table size. The first technique we try is to do a table decomposition. So specifically, we first remove a dimension to tabulate against from the table. And uh, therefore, we only tabulate against uh, three variables in, 
instead of four variables. Uh, this could reduce the size of the table from n cube uh, times the size of x to n squared times the size of x. Uh, and the key observation is that we can reconstruct an entries in the original big table from a smaller decomposed table alpha using two access to the smaller table and some simple computation. So the idea is to, the takeaway message for this slide is to compute the entries of a big table with multiple access to a smaller table. And the second technique is the Gaussian truncation. Uh, because a lot of uh, the terms can be set to zero uh, uh, because we truncate the area outside delta around the mean of the noise distribution to zero. This could uh, put bounds on the variables that we tabulate against. Uh, and the table size is reduced to two, two times delta square times the size of x instead of n or n cube times the size of x. And delta is very small. And uh, in the same numerical uh, example, the size of the table is reduced from 6.5 gigabytes to 40 gigabytes. And we believe the reduced table is easily, uh, like, um, can be easily fitted uh, onto the memory of an embedded device. So we study the actual acceleration of this technique uh, on 1D synthetic uh, data. And uh, we generate uh, uh, 1D synthetic uh, beams of different uh, comparison, uh, compression ratio. And uh, we report the average completion time of a beam on 256 cells. So e each beam can have, uh, uh, it, it's made of segments of uniform uh, length of uh, repeated occupancy values. The baseline is the approx FSMI, which just uh, uh, perform computation cell by cell. It takes 56 uh, microseconds. And this table shows the result. We see that uh, uh, up to L equals to four or the fourth, col uh, or, uh, or the fourth column, actually a prox FSMI RLE, the proposed L algorithm has an overhead that makes it slower. Uh, but uh, um, uh, starting from L equals to four, we see significant acceleration. And the acceleration can be different for different themes and also different to compression level of the octal map depending on the experimental setup. And this is mirrored on an Intel Xeon CPU. Um, to test its performance in practice, we ask a mini race car to explore a man-made 3D environment made of Halloween toys in a motion capture room. This experiment is done in collaboration with Trevor. The motion capture room has a size of 10 meter by 10 meter by five meter at 0.05 meter resolution with uh, four million cells. And uh, here is a completed um, 3D map of the environment. We record an average compression ratio around, of around 18x and leading to an acceleration ratio of eight times. So the summary of contribution is the first, the FSMI RLE algorithm that computes directly on a compressed format by run length encoding, yielding 8x acceleration for 3D mapping with Octomap. The second is uh, Gaussian truncation and table decomposition to reduce the size of the lookup table by a lot of times. In practice, we reduce a table size of 6.5 gigabytes to 40 kilobytes. And this system is tested uh, and integrated into a real system of race car in the motion capture room. And this work is in preparation for submission. Uh, the final work uh, of the defense that we'll cover is the dedicated hardware for FSMI algorithm. Uh, this is an overview of the systems uh, as I discussed before. Uh, there are a lot of components, but the computational bottleneck is a shaded one, the computation of mutual information. Therefore, we put the rest uh, uh, white components onto a general purpose computer uh, of uh, NVIDIA J JSON TX2. When the TX2 needs to compute mutual information, it sends the, the updated map and the candidate scan locations to the Linux FPGA, lets the FPGA compute the mutual information and send it back to the computer. This work is done in collaboration with Peter Lee. 
Uh, first of all, FSMI algorithm is parallelizable on a lot of levels. It is parallelizable inside a bin because it's just a summation. It is also parallelizable among different beams of the scan. Therefore, we can just uh, use different FSMI cores on different beams. This uh, uh, led us to decide on the, this high-level architecture. We will have a module to store the occupancy map and which powers the multiple FSMI cores, each FSMI core working on a different beam. And uh, uh, we built a FSMI core taking advantage of uh, the computational structure uh, with pipelining and parallelism so that the core itself is 10x faster, 10 times faster than an Intel Xeon core. The challenge is to provide enough bandwidth from the memory so that all the FSMI cores can be busy. Well, this is not easily achievable on a FPGA. If we store the entire occupancy map in one big memory, in a SRAM, for example, on a FPGA, an SRAM only has two read ports. If the FSMI cores are connected through an arbiter to the map, then an only two FSMI cores get the data they want if they all access uh, different uh, addresses uh, in the occupancy map. All the rest FM, FSMI cores will have to stay idle because they do not get the data they ask for. Well, an, a high level solution is to do a banking. Instead of storing the map in one big memory, we store it in a lot of smaller memories, each memory with two banks. Uh, this should improve the throughput, but it doesn't re really pr uh, prevent the collision between multiple FSMI cores uh, from happening because uh, they can just simply uh, uh, access the entries of, of the same bank. So the challenge here is to break up the memory in a way that can reduce the chance for multiple FSMI cores to visit the same bank. Well, there are a lot of uh, works uh, for, uh, to do this uh, in either CPU or GPU, but they are all designed for like a general memory access pattern. Uh, here we have a special memory access pattern uh, inside the information theoretic mapping framework. This is because we use an algorithm called Brisenheim's ray tracing algorithm to decide which cell belongs to the beam. This algorithm has a special property that along the major axis, uh, uh, there is only one cell per step, even if the beams can intersect with, uh, like, for example, two cells along that step in that row or that column. As a result, if we have multiple beams accessing the memory at starting at the same time from the bottom left of the uh, occupancy grid, uh, then they should always access the same column all the time if there's no memory collision. This uh, tells us that cells with the same numbers are accessed all the time, uh, at, at the same time. Ideally, this should be stored in different banks. Otherwise, there would be read conflicts and some calls will stall. Simple banking doesn't work for this special memory access pa uh, pattern. Uh, for row-based uh, pattern, all those beams will always ask for the occupancy values at one row at the same time. So, and also for columns, it's the same. So different beams always collide. So the proposed uh, banking pattern is a diagonal stripe. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, we kind of want to distribute all the cells in the same column around the neighborhood to as many different banks as possible so that when different beams um, access different part of the column at the same time, they either share a rate or they Require, uh, request different addresses. Uh, same for the row, either shared read or they access different uh, banks. And if there are n, n banks, 
Then there's no collision up to the nth column or row if we assume uh, each memory has one port. And we made a further improvement to the bandwidth by packing multiple entries into the, uh, by packing multiple occupancy values into the same memory address. And as a result, each um, FSMI core reads more than one value at, at a time. And uh, the frequency uh, of the memory accessing from the FSMI core reduces, uh, and also the ch chance of the collision reduces naturally as a consequence. We implement this design on a Xilinx FPGA, which has 16 FSMI cores, and the maximum uh, size of the map supported is 512 by 512. The baseline is an Intel Xeon CPU. The first experiment result is about the average time of FSMI on a single sensor beam, and we compare a single FPGA FSMI core against a single CPU core. We see that uh, through different uh, beam lenses, uh, FPGA implementation, a single core is, consist uh, is constantly, consistently faster uh, than the CPU implementation by 10x. And with 16 cores, the system is over 100x faster than an Intel Xeon core. And uh, we, you can use this system to compute MI for a complete 200 pi, 200 map at, at two hertz and we don't have to just uh, prune the candidate scan locations and only compute on a subset because of this throughput. Uh, we show another experimental results to show the effectiveness of our proposed design. So the left, on, on the second row shows the latency of uh, the computation on a single beam. The ba baseline is just uh, one big memory with no banking. And the third column is vertical banking with no memory packing. The fourth column, uh, in the fourth column, we added the diagonal banking. In the fifth column, we added the packing. And the last column is the ideal case with unlimited bandwidth. We can see that the more feature we add, the lower the latency and higher the speed up. And uh, more importantly, the final design is only 6.25% slower than the ideal case with unlimited bandwidth. We profile the performance of the design on FPGA and observe that the design only consumes less than 10% of the CPU power despite being more than 100 times faster. And this power number is for all the 16 cores to run in parallel. We study the impact of the acceleration in a 2D synthetic exploration and we show that if we are able to evaluate 25x more FSMMI, we can get a 90% shorter exploration path on average. Uh, so the summary of contributions for this work is uh, optimization on memory design to provide 6.x more memory bandwidth for 16 FSMMI cores to run in parallel. Diagonal stripe backing pattern for the special memory access pattern introduced by the Brissingham's algorithm. Packing multiple occupancy values into one cell to increase the memory bandwidth. And uh, the final design is more than 100 times faster than an Intel CPU core while consuming less than 10% of the power. And the final design can compute mutual information densely on a 200 by 200 map at two hertz, which no one could do before. And this work is in submission. Okay, this slide summarizes the uh, contribution presented in the defense. An algorithm to compute channel mutual information in much lower complexity and uh, three orders of magnitude faster. An algorithm to compute FSMI on compressed input uh, for octal map to do 3D mapping. And a novel architecture on FPGA to run FSMI 100x times faster while only consuming 10% of the power. Compared with the previous work, it's three order of magnitude faster, um, and it's also two to three times faster than the less well understood, less principled alternative metric. It's the first work to study the computation of mutual information on Octomap for 3D mapping, 
and it's the first work to build a dedicated accelerator for the computation of neutral information. Um, the conclusion of the thesis is algorithm and hardware co-design can improve the overall energy efficiency and throughput of the system more than what could be achieved from optimization each individually. Compressing the data and directly performing the computation on the compressed data structure enables significant acceleration. And even if the algorithm is parallelizable, it is critical to design a memory architecture that can provide enough memory bandwidth such that the cores can be fully utilized to deliver highly, higher throughput. Uh, this this is, uh, is to my mom who passed away by the worst possible cancer, the spine cancer during the PhD. It was a very hard moment, uh, a very hard year for me, for her, and for the entire family. Uh, when she was struggling with the disease, I was pursuing my own PhD at MIT, and I could not stay with her. Uh, I owe her forever. And also special thanks to my, this is, uh, my research advisor, Vivian. This is a very challenging journey of PhD, personally to me, it consists of multiple highs and downs. And thanks for the guidance through this PhD. To, and also thanks for, uh, for giving me the opportunity to work on so many different projects across so many fields. And also to learn both on algorithm and hardware and also make things uh, solid in chips. Uh, thanks for the committee members. Uh, Sertesh and Luca um, cl co collaborate closely with me on many of the work presented. And thanks for Philip uh, for the guidance and help he offered uh, when I did my master and also for serving on the committee. And thanks for all the awesome lab members that accompanied me during the PhD. And also thanks for the, all the amazing friends and colleagues at MIT. And this concludes the defense. Thanks. that we can explore to like, make some computation of mutual information more precise. But the problem is that that also introduces much higher complexity. So the independence assumption is more like a compromise between the best performance and also the precision of what we can do. Any other questions? Clarification more than a question. You are mentioning that uh, you can do 200 by 200 occupancy map at 2 hertz. Does that mean that you check at the um, mutual information at every cell of the map? Yes, I check mutual information at every possible cell of, of the map. Do you consider different poses, different orientations for each cell? Like, do you need to do that? Or uh, well, I just con densely compute mutual information for each individual beam, and we assume 360 scans. Um, do you need to do? Do you need to compute really at, at every pixel? In the sense that uh, you know, if you, are, uh, you have a partially explored map, mm -hmm. isn't that enough to look at the boundaries of the explored areas? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, this overall mutual information algorithm is a more principled uh, al al algorithm uh, because of the noise uh, presented uh, in the sensor model. Even if you have scanned one place once, uh, you might be uh, it might be necessary to scan it multiple times to make sure the result is accurate. That's why you may not, you, you should not just consider the frontiers. Sometimes you also need to consider the inner boundaries. And also, it's important if you work in a dynamic scene. Scenes can change, so you have to reconsider the possibility of every cell. Any other question? Part 
the defense.